I got lost your hearing now. I can't hear you now. You can't hear me now? Hey. Hey, what happened? You hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah you're fine. Inside, Inside sports, sports, talk. sports Talk. One, two, talk, yes, talk. Inside, Inside sports, sports, talk. sports Talk. Traveling the country for the biggest stories in collegiate sports. Bringing you the news that will impact every college Ooh. athlete in America. From the Ivy League to the SWAC. Big Sky to the Big Ten, Notre Dame, FAMU, Miami or Maine. No university is too big, no college too small. We tell it I'm all. I'm trying to I'm trying to see you off the reflection on the other off the other game. Inside Sports Talk with your hosts, the coach Mickey Clayton and Clayton Smith. They're bringing you insight on all the latest stories from all the biggest names in collegiate sports. Join us for the next 60 minutes for Inside Sports Talk. The sports talk show, the sports talk show of a different kind. What's up, Coach? How's it going, man? Oh, snap. <laughs> How about that? I see you working. I see you working. Yeah, I'm good. Are you my hero before I knew what a hero was, bro? Indeed, you, you you seem to have gotten a good one uh, in Hugh Jackson. I, I mean, the guy, when it comes to being an offensive guy, he was offensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals. And he just has a way with not only he knows his stuff, and plus he has the personality to, to, reach, to, to reach the players. So it's good. I think you guys got one right. <laughs> you know, and and what was what's amazing? Well, I don't I don't want to say amazing. But you guys beat out the San Francisco 49ers for them. I mean, if you put both franchises together, you would say, why would he choose the Browns instead of the 49ers? You know, I had this discussion with another, uh, another reporter friend of mine today. And I said, well, he knows the division, number one. And he doesn't know what kind of power he's getting in Cleveland. So there's a lot of, a lot of aspects there. And if he wins there, oh my goodness, he will be he will be the man. Exactly. It won't. It won't. It just gives people something to talk about. That's all. That's all. And when when you're reaching, when you need some something, you, you know, when as a reporter, sometimes you need something. You want something out of the ordinary. You know, no one has ever really seen that before happen. So 
you know, Pac-Man Jones blowing up. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Burfett, Burkett, Burfett, him blowing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what? No. No, this is different. So, no, I don't think I don't think it'll have an effect at all. If anything, it'll give them more credit in the locker room because it shows players. When you substitute character for performance, this can happen. This is the consequence behind it. I mean, you know what you're getting into. You knew what you was getting into with Pac-Man, Mr. Script Club. And that's right. I said it, Mr. Script Club, uh, Jones, and and Burke. Yeah, I mean, he had... He's been fined six, seven times already for silly stuff, for for uh, uh, illegal hits and stuff like that. So uh, it, it, it comes with. I mean, I'm not saying you should have all choir boys, but you you hey, this comes with the territory. If you want to do that, if you if you get these people, if you get these players, then this could happen. This is this can happen. Perhaps, uh, perhaps. But I mean, uh, do you do you always want to sleep with the devil? Uh, I, and I'm not saying that. Don't I'm not saying these guys were bad pitch because Pac Man actually has has been pretty cool the last three four years. He. he Ever since that little incident with with uh, Commissioner Goodell and, and all that, he's he was been he's been very quiet up until the playoffs started. So, I mean, I still but but I think you told it a leopard can't changes what a leopard can't changes what coach his spots he can't change his spots now okay he can't change his spots you know and I, I hate the fact that they really tried to come back and go at coach, you know, that he didn't have control. And over a certain point, I don't know, you know, you have control over who you put on the field. But like we tell kids all the time, and I told mine, I said, once you go on the floor, you're the playmaker. It's on you after that point. So you either have to do or not do. Coach can't control that. Indeed. I mean, it's on, it, 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 it comes on the players. It becomes, once they're on the field, it's the players. I mean, one, uh, Warren Sapp said this all the time. You know, it's really not about X's and O's. It's about the Jimmys and the Joes. Mm-hmm. And that means between those lines is the players' game. Mm-hmm. So, hey. Now, now, this is one thing I always believe. You know, I, you know, I coach basketball. That's what I did. I can't control that first crazy shot you take. But I can control that second one. By you... sitting right there beside you. Right there beside me. Just like Timothy Mosgoff pulled that three when they were two two games ago and they were trying to get the last shot of the half. That was the last shot he took for the rest of the night. He did not play again. You know, and I guess if they're going at the coach, you know, they're saying, you know, like you said, they have been penalized before. They've been penalized before. And I like what some of the coaches say. It actually starts in football and training camp. You know, you cover training camp and different coaches that you've seen cover cover fights different. They can fight in, in training camp and it's okay to some coaches, but other coaches don't play that because they know at some point that fight that you're having in training camp is going to escalate and they're going to have that same fight during the game. That's exactly right. Now, now, you don't mind some guys letting off some steam. I mean, especially you, you mentioned training camp. So especially down here, it's hot. It, it's it, it is in the upper 90s. Is in the 90s 
plus with the equipment on and, and the sun beating down, it, it, it feels like over 100. So I can see tempers getting, and if a guy is getting the best of you, oh, yeah. Oh, tempers can flare. But Lovey Smith didn't play that too much. You know, you have a little, 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 little tussle, tussle here and there. But then it was like, okay, let's go. Because you got to rely on that guy eventually. That guy you just got into a tussle with, you're going to need him to perform. Mm -hmm. And if you two don't get along, who knows? Well, what kind of chemistry is that for a team? You don't have to like everyone on your team, but you, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fight for him. Well, you brought up Lovey Smith. What is the real deal behind them releasing Lovey? And I know you've had time to look into it because that's one of the firings that caught everybody by surprise. And what I hope is that they didn't fire Lovey because people were sniffing around the offensive coordinator. I hope that's not why they got rid of him. Uh, hmm. Next, you nailed it. I mean, yeah, uh, honestly, yeah. listen, no, Cole, seriously. The Glazers have been MIA. I mean, they haven't spoken to us at all. They weren't even down when they put the general manager out to dry the next day to to explain why they fired Lovey. But it, it, it comes down to this. Teams have started asking for for permission to talk to Dirk Cutter. And Jameis seemed to have a good relationship with Dirk Cutter. And they're all in on Jameis. They're all in with Jameis Winston. So, hey, if it comes down to losing Dirk or losing Lovey Smith, Lovey, we love you, but you got to go. And, and that's what it was. Wow. That's, now, that's, you know, kind of what the – you know, the, the undercurrent was, and it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't good. It sends a bad message. And one of the things that, and I guess the, the old head coach in me comes out, you know, that I, I have, I kind of like Lou Holtz. Um, you know, they put an interim coach in and all of a sudden, sometimes the team plays so much better. That smells, it smells because if you can go in as head co interim head coach all of a sudden, why you couldn't make that much of an impact when you were the assistant coach. Mm. You know, one of the, the number one thing that you want in an assistant coach is loyalty. That's the number one thing. And when you work inside these locker rooms and you're not being supportive of your head coach, at the end of the day, that's going to come back and bite you where you sit. And this guy's been a head coach on the collegiate level but never the NFL level. And it's a difference. Yes, he's been a coordinator, a successful coordinator for a while, but can he carry that over to the whole team? You know, he's going to have to win back the defensive side of the locker room. Mm, mm. Because they let Lovey Smith go, and Lovey was more of a defensive coach. And their top player, one of their top players, Levante David, was like, it's ridiculous. It's stupid to do this. So mm -hmm. if he gets the job, which all everything points to it right now, although you know what? The longer it goes, the more you wonder. Right. So, and the Glazers have always, always done things differently. No mm -hmm. one saw Raheem Morris coming. No one saw them trying to get Chip Kelly and eventually landing Greg Schiano. They always do things undercover. So it really wouldn't surprise me if they have something else up their sleeve. But right now, all indications are it's Dirk Cutter's job. The longer it goes without them naming him, it makes you suspicious that that might not be the hire, that they might move in another direction. And a lot of time you get these owners who actually feel like they're smarter than everybody else in the room, which then creates a problem. That's what happened when you have an owner like Cleveland had who decided they were going to take Johnny Manziel and pretty much told the GM that's who he was going to take. And in the end, it cost him its job. 
I understand that he tried to tell you, Jackson, that he wanted to give Johnny Manziel one more try. Hmm. You wasn't having it. You said he got to be out of here. You said, if you want me, it's either me or Johnny, baby. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Otherwise, think, he was going to catch that bus right to New York. Yeah. 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 But hey, think of the quarterbacks that's out, though. Johnny Manziel, Robert Griffin III is going to be available. Wow. Where are they going to end up? See, you are, you are, you are an RG3 fan. I am. I and am. Um, I, I don't even want him to end up in Cleveland. You know, I just assume we stay with what we have, draft a quarterback, and bring him along. You know, I'm more concerned, really, with how he gets that the highest paid defense in the NFL straight. Mm. You know, you wouldn't know that based on the performance and what he could do with um, Hayden. Who who played this year? Even he played like he had a concussion in the first game. <laughs> he was in concussion protocol, but that concussion must have lasted the next exhibition season because they were lighting his butt up. You know, he must have thought he was back playing against Alabama or something. In the SEC having flashbacks. I was about to ask, what's up with these Florida players with concussions? Uh, the skins tight end Jordan Reed. He had a bunch of concussions. Uh, Percy Harvin, bunch of concussions. What, what goes on? What really happens in Gainesville? Mm-hmm. Hey, they probably feed them better. <laughs> they probably feed them better. <laughs> you know, we got Cameron Irving from Florida State, and they were saying that he looked better and was in better conditioning when he was at FSU than he was when he got to Cleveland. Cause they, I saw them knock him all the way back, and I, you know, we draft a guy that they say can be all pro at center. Well, we didn't get a chance to play to see him play center, though we will, cause I'm sure Alex Mack is out of there. But the way they were manhandling Irvin, you know, and I, you know, I love the choice. I just, he just has to get a lot better next year. He's gonna have to get better. And off season in the program will help. Uh, you hope to see improvement from year to year. You're better or you won't be there for long. Yeah, yeah, well, Johnny Manziel improved from year to year, but he came from so deep in the doggone hole, his improvement just kind of ended up with him being adequate. Well, but not only that, though, Coach. I, listen, uh, at 21-22, you know, you knew. I, I was a knucklehead. I, I did stuff, and thank no, God I had no No problem. argument on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and thank God I didn't have no money. Mm-hmm. So, but so, so you, of course you're gonna you're gonna do some crazy things. But this guy, you don't sneak away. You don't. <laughs> there's some things you don't do. You just. This is your livelihood. This is this is your your life. You you can't do this. Now, now, what do you what what exactly are you referencing of the many? Johnny escapades are you are you referencing? Let's see. Not only the last well, let, let's just stick with the last one. Where where he's he 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 snuck out of town. Uh I think he went to Vegas and had a wig on and was supposed to be somebody else. And then when he had to sign the uh credit card, <laughs> he had to sign his real name. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a, that, that's how he got caught there. And yeah, then, after, after, but, but Rick, 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 let, let me tell you the story out of Cleveland. The story out of Cleveland is, one, is that he didn't have a concussion. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, oh, yeah. No, no. Who, who gets, that's what he came who to practice gets a concussion for? that shows up on Wednesday from a win, from a Sunday game? Though some things in life are delayed, but, they, you know, they say he came drunk. Yeah. And that yeah. they call themselves trying to cover up for him yet again. And Johnny was like, Look, I didn't know I was supposed to carry through with the lie all the way through the weekend. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What, are you kidding me? You don't right think here. you have to carry it all the way through? Okay. 
So I mean, yeah. and, and and you know they, you know he he, I saw him in um, Charlotte when he got hurt his freshman year. I mean, his, his rookie, and he tried to that sprint draw, and they ran him down, and he jumped up, got all in their face, took three or four steps, and fell. And I was like, what is this about? Mm. Then he comes back at halftime with a towel over his face, talking about he had, he had a pull groin. He hadn't limped a step. You know, <laughs> we knew then. You know, it, we had hoped he got better, but, you know, that's, that's going to be somebody else's problem. But I know that you can't be too happy with why Well, what do you got to say about how Washington ended up? Let me just that. You know, I know you're more Redskins fan than Tampa Bay. Oh, I, I am Redskins fan. There's no doubt about that. Um, I'm surprised. Um, I'm happy that they made the playoffs. Uh, Kirk Cousins played well. I, I can't take anything away from him. Uh, John Gruden could have uh, I still think Kirk Cousins is inconsistent I don't like the way they did RG3 I Rick, think Rick, uh, don't hold the time out Rick you act like you really having an issue choosing your words right now what are you trying to do be politically correct for the first time in your life you're a Redskins fan you should be cur- elated I'm trying not to curse on on, on, on over Spreaker. I'm, I'm trying to be, because I have, I'm, I'm actually split. Okay. There's not one, one man does not make a team. And I am a Redskin fan through and through. So whoever my quarterback is, I support that quarterback. I don't like the way they did Robert Griffin III. I don't like what Jay Gruden did to this man. And then they kept him inactive for all but one game. So he couldn't possibly get in the game and get hurt. And then they owe him sixteen million next year. You know, I, I think that's flaw. Okay, do you think the Redskins as a team did not support RG three as much as they did for Kirk Cousins? No, they didn't. Right. No, they didn't at all. But hey, they made their choice. Okay, Once now now I'm not talking again. about the front office. I'm talking about the guys in the locker room who put on the shoulder pads. And the helmets. You they don't, don't think that they played like that for they RG3? Matter. They don't matter. They don't they got a livelihood to protect. Okay. And if the coach says RG3 is on the bench. All right. All right, you're the coach. And everyone loves me, but you like Terry Giles. Mm. And no matter what I'm doing, I'm killing Terry Giles. You still playing Terry Giles. All right. So so Leonard Leonard, Leonard Hamilton's gonna say. Hey, coach, man, you're doing them wrong. Well, you can sit beside him. That's what you would do. All right. And the pros ain't no different in that aspect. Well, I mean, let, they, well, well, well let, me, let me say this. As a player, back in the days when we were at A&M and our, our basketball teams were rolling pretty good. I mean, we, we, we were rolling real good. And it always bothered me that no matter what you did in practice, you weren't going to play any more than what coach thought. It helped develop my coaching philosophy that if somebody kick your ass in practice, they're going to have your job. It doesn't matter if you were player of the week five weeks in a row. If he had you a new one in practice, you're going to be coming off to get his job because he's going to have yours. You got to bring it for me every day. If, you, if you're still starting, you want a real short lease, and I'm putting Rick in there, First time you do something stupid, and he gonna roll. You got to you got to prove it by me, and you know you play it. Ballers know who the ballers are. Yeah. Ballers yeah. know. You coach can say whatever you want to say. Guys know in practice, and I think a lot of times coaches lose, can lose their team by not playing the guy who can get the job done. Because end of the day, them guys this this their livelihood. These guys want to get to the playoffs. They got a wife. And or a girlfriend that's going to need the extra money that they get every brown they go, they're going to need that money. They're going to need their livelihood. They get paid to play. And they want, it's all about the Benjamins. And if this guy costing them money, they're not going to be able to play. They're going to need to get him out of there. But, but that's why getting to the playoffs was so important for Washington this year. If they hadn't gotten to the playoffs, who knows how this experiment would have 
would have turned out. But mm-hmm. with Dallas being with with Romo being hurt and Dallas faltering, with the with the Eagles imploding, and the Giants just being mediocre, the Skins were able to put something together. Now, if it didn't work, then Jay Gruden could have been looking for a job this year. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the year, he said Cousins was his quarterback and he was going to stick with them for the whole season. He said that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. But he made the playoffs. Now Gruden looks like a genius. Now they can get rid of RG3. They can cut him without no consequence. Right. 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 Well, Rick, we're we, we going to kind of wrap this up with something that happened in the game with Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. You know, we talked about it a little bit. You, you, you're not a Steeler fan, but what was your impression of the last two minutes of that game? Wow. Um, it was an illegal hit. It was not a legal hit. It was illegal. So uh, Okay, Captain Obvious. What? Okay, so but you got you at can I can I can I state my opinion please? Can can I do it the way I like to do it? I don't know. Like, it depends. If you go too far out there like you did, you know, that's just some reach to say it was an illegal hit. Wow. Can I finish, please? I do See, something. See, that's, that's always been your problem. Do you never something. Let the person finish. Let me finish. See, that that's why I always had to keep your ass in line. See? You you, you don't have respect. Okay, so it was an illegal hit. We know that. All right. I didn't have no problems with that first 15-yard penalty. Okay. My my problem starts when Joey Porter from the Steelers step on that field and starts talking and getting into Cincinnati Bengals' faces. That's where my problem starts. And then they flag Pac-Man Jones? It, it, it didn't make sense to me because this guy comes off the off the bench and incites these guys, the officials are right there, and they give them an extra 15 yards. I had a problem with the officiating in that instance okay. because okay. you you get that porter off the field or you flag him for coming on the field and doing that. And th- think about it. The, the game was intense anyway. Hard hits everywhere. The two teams don't like each other. They're the same division. So you always got to watch out for extracurricular activities. True. Now, now you bring in the factor where a coach is coming on the field, an ex-player, an ex-dealer at that, mm-hmm. who was, mm-hmm. and you know he was talking noise. You know he was talking noise. Right. And, and getting in their faces? Nah. So the officials lost it for me right there. And I think it cost Cincinnati a legitimate shot at winning that game. Well, who was that who came up behind Joey Porter? Was that Pac-Man who bumped him from behind? Yep. Yeah. No, 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 no. Pac-Man came from in front of him. See, but Pac-Man who was in front of him? There were some big boys behind him. He yeah, walked intensely behind him and, and hit him from the back. Walked into him from the back. Well, he should have been on the field. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a problem with that either. I don't, because I thought he should, you know, his thing was he called himself going to check on Antonio Brown, but they were already carrying Antonio Brown off the field. He did that to 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 to, to talk noise. Yep. And he probably was going out to per- Burkett for, for the hit, thinking he's still a player. He a coach, man. He a coach. Stay your, stay your butt on the field. I mean, off the field. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Right, 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 right. I'm with you on that. Rick, I'm with you on that. Well, Rick, we're going to wrap this show up, uh, and we're going to do this again. Hold, hold on just a minute. I think we got something here. Hey uh, there. This is Gil the Cobb Hunter, Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I listen to Insight. I encourage you to lock it in and listen every Friday evening. Check out Mickey Clayton on Insights. You remember her, don't you? Huh? I said, could 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 you hear that? Could you hear that promo then? No. Okay, I got to work on it so so you can hear. Yeah, I just did a promo with Gilda, a senator from South Carolina, who's a rattler, who did a promo. Told everybody to listen to insights, but 
we gonna we gonna get all the kinks out, Rick. All and right, like, way to go, Gilda. Good yeah. job. Man. You know, we, we gonna we, we gonna do this again next week and uh, talk some more about it and, and see what we can get, get in here and get insights back where everybody can hear it again, get acclimated to some of the stuff that we're talking about, and uh, let people get a chance to call in. Hey, coach, be, before we before we sign off, yes, hey, sir. look, happy Founders Day to Delta Sigma Theta. Uh, Sorority Incorporated, uh, 103 today. Happy Founders Day, ladies. Boy, oh boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you you got you got a lot of uh, kudos on that one and for the Kappa's Founders Day, which was when? January 5th, yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, and yo. All right, we appreciate you. This insight. This is your host, Mickey Clayton, along with Rick Brown, legendary writer from Lakeland, we're going to sign off and the insight's going to catch you again real soon. Thank you, there. Peace. Peace. One, two, talk, yeah, talk. Stay up to date with the latest from Insights. Visit our website at insights.com. Two eyes in the middle, I-N-S-I-I-G-H-T-S dot com. Insights is a copyright of Mac4 Enterprises, a Florida corporation. This broadcast is produced under the exclusive ownership of Mac4 Enterprises, and is the intellectual property and trademark of Mac4 Enterprises. The comments of the hosts and other individual speakers on Insights represent their independent thoughts and representations.